Hey, good evening, Encounter family. We're so glad that you've joined us here for our Wednesday night online streaming service. We just thank you for your continued support of Encounter Church through your prayers, through your faithful giving. We appreciate that so much. And if you're giving tonight, uh, you can see the different ways to give right here. Uh, you can give online, you can give via text to give, or you can always mail in your gifts. However you're giving tonight, thank you so much for your continued support and your faithfulness uh, to, towards God's people. So uh, we just appreciate you and love you so much. You know, tonight, Pastor Frida's on with uh, uh, Tanya Urimkiv, and they're doing an awesome conversation. And, you, and this is going to be a lot of fun, but I have a couple quick announcements to share with you. Uh, first of all, the women are going to be meeting on June 24th for a night out. They're going to be hanging out and having a good time, uh, just talking about life and also learning about God with one another, just sharing. So if you'd like to be a part of that uh, women's community here at Encounter, make sure you go to ecdenver.org right now and sign up RSVP for that event right now. Also, here's a couple quick announcements. Via videos and watch this. Hi there, Encounter family. It's Pastor Reese and my good friend Jordan. He's going to share with you an incredible opportunity for you to make a life changing difference in the lives of hundreds of kids. This year, Encounter Church, in partnership with the Iron Sharp Community Foundation, is partnering with two Title I schools in Aurora Lansing Elementary School as well as East Middle School. And through this project, our hope is to serve over 1,100 students to provide the necessary school supplies, backpacks, and other resources to help get these students back to school in the fall. You can give financially, or you can visit the Encounter Church website at ecdenver.org forward slash backpacks to help purchase some of the necessary supplies. You know, Encounter family, this is the second year that we have partnered with the Lansing and the Aurora School District. And I just know that, that we can do above and beyond uh, what they are expecting because we have a God who can do above and beyond in us. Thank you so much for your generous support. Know that we are making a difference in our community. Have a great day. You know, last week we prayed over children and students coming home for uh, summer vacation. And as we prayed over them, I felt very, very impressed to remind them that God hears them. God listens to them. Children have a voice with God. Sometimes we think that people need to be old enough to hear God. That's not true. God is the God of the universe. He invented communication. And he knows how to communicate with children. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. So today I'm going to interview someone, Tanya, who heard God as a child. And so I just want you to listen to her wonderful testimony of how God has led her through the years. So Tanya, where were you born? I was born in Russia. And we moved to Washington State uh, so when I was like several months old and that's like when we migrated and um, at about seven years old I moved to Alaska with my family and a lot of our relatives like it was just the thing moving yeah. to Alaska so right that's where I grew up yeah. so you how old were you when you moved to Alaska seven. seven yeah around there okay so you do not remember Russia no, no, yeah, I was like, I wasn't even a year old. Yeah. But you were in a community where there were several other Russians, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 we definitely grew up yeah. in the Russian community. It was very... And that culture. Yep, that yes. culture was kept. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. I grew up in a German community. They were born in Russia, so I had kind of a, a similar culture. Yeah. So I understand that. So, um, so then... What, how did you get to know the Lord? So uh, I come from a Christian family, right, of right. course. Um, my, you know, so I grew up around it. My, you know, parents were involved in ministry. My dad was a worship pastor um, and my mom was his wife. So she was always right, there, you know, right. she was, you know, mm -hmm. huge on praying and just interceding for people and hearing from God. Um, so that was 
very, like from a young age, I knew who God was and all that, but I didn't come to like salvation, didn't accept Jesus until I was like eight years right. old at a, at a like children's conference, basically. It was like a three day encounter type mm-hmm. this, that's what they called it. And that's where I got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, got baptized, um, got baptized and started speaking in tongues, you know, just kind you did of it all at once. the whole package. Yeah. It was like, it was handed to me. And I just remember, um, once that all happened, my parents like sat me down and they were like, this is a really precious gift. And like, God will speak to you directly. Yes. And, and something they told me about like speaking in tongues was like, practice it every day. Like, just practice it. Like, you don't, you know, you, you won't really know what you're doing, but just keep practicing it. And so yeah. I, was, I was like, okay, sure, whatever. I'll keep practicing it, you know? And so that's how I came to salvation. But, you know, eight years old, got older, preteen, teenager, got with the wrong, wrong crowd. And you know how that goes. Yes. That kind of veered me away from him for a little bit. Right. But you, you really always have known Mm-hmm. God. Yeah. You've always known there's a Savior. Yep. How wonderful is that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really thankful for that now. I mean, through my teen years, I remember really questioning a lot of mm-hmm. those things and coming to moments of like, no, I don't believe it. No, right. like that. that's like, it's whatever. It's not that important. You right. know? But now, you know, at 25, I'm like, that is like the most amazing thing that could have happened to me to have that knowledge and not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge, knowing that, you know, Jesus was always with me. Right. And the cool thing about like getting filled with the Holy Spirit and getting saved at such a young age is even though I went through all of that junk through my teen years, you know, identity crisis, if you want to call it that, um, you know, having the wrong friends, doing the wrong things, um, like I always, I I can't explain it any other way, but I always heard God's voice and it was like always like inside. Yes. And I felt, I would feel him or hear him speaking to me like what you're doing or what you're about to do is wrong or, you know, like, no, go do this instead. Or, you know, it's kind of like the verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 30, where it says um, the Holy Spirit will be a voice behind you telling you which way to go to the right right, or to the left. left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just really what it's been most of my life. And I look back on specific moments, especially the worst downfalls that I've had, especially, you know, when I broke my parents' heart over and over and over again, in those moments, I remember like hearing God's voice telling me like, what you're doing is not right. And I don't want you to be doing this, but you're doing it you know, because I gave you your own will. Mm-hmm. And, but here, like I knew it, it's just that conviction, you know, that conviction that God is, has a better plan for you. Right. He speaks to you and he, and he, you know what to do. It's just a matter of obeying. I love that God, once you've invited him in, he hangs around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, he's there before you invite him in, and yeah. then he keeps hanging around. Yeah, that's and he a good way to put it. Let go of us. Yep. I love that. I was saved as a child too, as you know, and so I know God talks to us when we're children. I yeah. know He does. So, have you ever felt a call to ministry? Yes. Um, so, from from a young age, my parents kind of instilled it in me and said like you know, not really it was almost like an unspoken thing and probably because I saw them in ministry and I saw so many of my relatives in ministry um but I always had this like sense that like I'm supposed to do the work of for God you know mm-hmm. And not just for God, with God. Right. You know, even as a kid, you know, and I, my dad, as I said, he was a worship pastor. And so I'd go to all the rehearsals with him. And I just remember I'd be running around with my friends, but every now and then I'd pause and I'd look at what he's doing, you know, how he's directing the band and how he's, you know, talking to the, you know, other worship leaders or the choir or whatever. And I just remember looking at that and being like, one day I'm, I know I'm going to do that. I, you know, I don't know how, but I'm going to do that. And, but then the older that I got, 
I realized that it wasn't just that that I like doing. You know, I fell in love with the Word of God, yeah. and I fell in love with just sharing that with other people. And like now, like I feel this this greater like sense of purpose in that, in like re- like help helping others understand what the Word of God is saying or whatever it is. And so that, yeah, I definitely felt a call to ministry. And um, I mentioned this offline, but like. At Bible school is where I realized that you can be in ministry wherever you go. Yes. And that was, I think, a very humbling um, realization because we sometimes have this picture that we need to be on stage or that we need to have like a big platform or whatever it is. But ministry is really doing what God asked you to do in the moment. Right. Right. and just loving other people, spreading the gospel that way. So mm-hmm. that's how I feel about it. And isn't there a transition too, to be loving ministry, loving the word, to really loving him? Yeah. Where it's the most important thing is to love God with all your heart and do what he says. Yeah. And that he is our life. Yeah. And he actually has a plan to live through us. Yeah. Once I understood that it's God living through me, doing his thing, mm-hmm. not me doing my thing, not even him helping me do my thing. Mm-hmm. It's really him just saying, can I live through you? Yeah. I mean, he actually does say he is our life, mm-hmm. right? I'm telling you, there's so much joy in that when you just let him do his thing. Yeah. Because it's the best thing in the world. Truly. And it always brings yeah. joy, doesn't it? It it really does. It's not does. like things aren't hard sometimes because they are. Yeah. But there's joy in doing it his way. Yeah, I, that was he he reminded me of that even recently just in the last couple of months um I had gotten so caught up with my projects and like just doing things for him and I came across this quote that just really like struck me and it said uh, being with God and living in Him will should become the criteria of your success. Yes. And I was like, that just like made me pause and I was like, mm-hmm. I need to pursue Him instead of my projects. Yes. Instead of the tasks of, you know, completing X, Y, and Z for Him there, here, whatever. Yeah. I'm learning to every morning say, well, here are my plans, Lord. But what are yours? Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, I really want to do his plans. And there's always time for his plans. Yeah. And sometimes there's no time for all mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, what brought you to Denver? Oh, Because you I were in Alaska. <laughs> you were in, in Washington, then Alaska, and now here you are in Denver. What brought yeah. you here? It's kind of a long story, but, like, I'll try to just hit the main points of it. Right. Um, after I graduated high school, um, I was already in a pretty bad place with my parents and I was like, okay, I need to just get back on track with them. You know, I just had this kind of a preconceived belief that, you know, if I become an adult without my parents, then like, I'm just going to lose my way completely. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I need to go to Bible school. That will please them. You know, very much a people pleaser. So Bible school was... To please your parents yeah. and to get in good with your parents. Yeah, that was okay. the that was the motive of it. I, I went there uh, with my best friend. We went to a Bible school in uh, Oregon, mm-hmm. and it was near Portland. And oh. yeah, it was like a semester long program, very you know short, very concise, but very very like hard. It was mm-hmm. like a lot of studying and all that. It was compact. Um, And I got to tell you, like the first month I was there, I hated it. I cried so much. I was like, I don't want to be here. Like, this is too hard and too, like, invasive. You know, I felt like it was just too much of everything and everyone. And it was like the biggest class that we've, that that school has had in a long time too. And, um, but then I think it was like a couple months into it where I was like, okay, God, like, I will recommit my life to you because I know I'm saved, but I will like commit my life to you officially if you make it an adventure. And like when I, when I prayed that I heard his voice so loud and clear, he was like, okay, I'm here. 
And it was it felt like he was like right in front of me. I was like, whoa, okay, he's here. And after that, things just started changing. My perspective on life, I feel like color came into the things that I was seeing. And um, so after after Bible school, they like they send you on a missions trip and they pick the country that you go to. So I was supposed to go to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And so I was very committed to that. I was like, okay, if God spoke through the leaders, that's where I'm going to go. And Ukraine would have been ideal for you because they, you could speak the language pretty much, right? They, um, I understand them, it. I would have learned it, though. Yeah. yeah I, I, and a lot of them do understand Russian, yeah, though, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you still speak Russian mm-hmm. fluently. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and so if I was around Ukrainian language, I'd understand it, pick it up. Right. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's not too different. Um, and after that, the... Um, after the going to Ukraine, right, I didn't end up going to Ukraine. I started working and saving up for it um, because I was supposed to go later in the year. I was waiting mm-hmm. for like my visa, my passport, all the things. And during that time frame, I felt very distant from God. And I said, and this one day I was just praying and I was like, God, if you don't do something radical in my life, I'm going back. I'm turning back. I'm just, I'm done. Like, that's it. And he, a few days later, spoke to my mom, spoke to my dad, spoke to another friend in Colorado. They all got together without me knowing, purchased me a ticket to Colorado, not knowing why I'm supposed to go there, and bring it up to me. And they're like, hey, we feel like you need to go to Colorado. Obviously, there's a lot more things in the story, but they tell me that. And I'm like, what, what about Ukraine? What about that? What about this? And they're like, no, you need to leave, like, now. You need to leave soon. So 12 hours after finding out, I'm on the plane on my way to Denver, and I was super confused, not sure why I'm even flying out. But then I remember as we flew into Denver and, like, seeing just the land over there, I looked out the window and I heard God very clearly, I didn't need you in Ukraine. I don't need you in Ukraine right now. I need you in Colorado. This is this is your mission ground. This is where you're supposed to be. And I've been here ever since. I love that. I love that God leads us very specifically, not just through the inner voice, but through people around us. Yeah. And it lines up with what he wants if we listen. Yeah. And even though and sometimes it's very fast, isn't yep. it? <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, and so what advice do you have? For people who want to hear specifically from God regarding their future. Yeah. Um, so one of the things is remain faithful in the small things and stay consistent with them. You know, read the Bible, pray every day. Like my mom told me, you know, practice this gift of tongues, right. you know, and prayer is a gift itself. So mm-hmm. we could practice that every day, make it part of your lifestyle. And just be faithful with the little things. What did God tell you? What was the last thing God told you to do? Do that. Mm -hmm. Is it read your Bible? Then read your Bible. Is it go pray for people? Pray for people. Whatever. Um, Another thing I would say is um, make prayer and reading part of your lifestyle, even if you don't want it to. Because that was the one thing that I, like, I, I wish I got into more in depth of it, but... I know like the importance of it really changes, changes a lot. And then the last thing is to surround yourself with the right people, Mm -hmm. with people who believe in God, follow God and hear God's voice. Um, Cause then if, and you know, (laughs) cause if you're not hearing from him, someone else will. And to this day, I've had seasons on end where it felt like God turned, you know, his back on me yet again and but people like I mean even you Pastor Frida you've spoken into my life and you know other leaders and other friends they just sometimes text me something real quick and it's like I needed that today and that came from God I know it did so yeah I think all of us need to know that God loves us he loves to talk to us after all he created us we're his kids If you don't know him, you can become his child. He loves you too, and he wants you to be his child. Ask him to come into your life. What I know about hearing from God 
is that he's always listening. And he, tell, he speaks to us all kinds of ways, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Just all kinds of ways. I've asked him for the simplest things, and he's answered. I've asked him for complicated things, mm -hmm. and he's answered. Sometimes we feel like we don't hear, but we know what to do because we know the word. So I just want to pray for you. Lord, help each person listening to hear from you. And if they don't know you, give them a hunger to know you, Lord, and help them to respond. Father, I pray a blessing on those who are listening today. And thank you so much for loving us and talking to us. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Hi there, I'm Pastor Reese, and you've been watching one of our streaming messages here from Encounter Church. I want you to know that at Encounter Church, we are a diverse community of people who seek God together and share Jesus and love to our city and world. And that's our heart towards you. Uh, we want you to have an amazing relationship with God. We want you to understand how much God loves you. We want you to know that He has real practical solutions for the challenges you face in life, whether those are emotional challenges or physical challenges or financial challenges, uh, whatever they are, Jesus is there to help you and to, to guide you and steer you through that. But all of that potential help is just, it's just waiting there until you release it. And the way we release it is by making a decision to welcome Jesus into our hearts as both our saviors, as the, as the one who forgives us of our shortcomings and failures, our sins, if, you're, if you would allow me, but also as our Lord, as, as someone that we go to and say, you know, not my will, but yours be done. You know, Christ, I, I don't know how to, to fix this. I've made a mistake, I've done something, I've messed this situation up, but I'm looking to you to help me. When we do that, when we invite Jesus into our hearts, uh, he literally uh, makes us become born again, is what the King James uses. It's, it's a term which reflects to us experiencing a new life that wasn't there before. And so right now, I'd just like to pray with you if you would like to experience that new life. If you'd like to invite Christ into your, to your heart as your Lord and Savior right now, just say this with me. Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I need you. Forgive me of my, my failures and my sins and become my Lord. Lead me into a better way of life. And I ask this in faith. Amen. You know, if you did that, know that God heard that prayer and God responded. And uh, we'd like to send you some uh, information that we believe would be a help for you. If you would just email us at ec at ecdenver.org, uh, we'll, we'll get that out to you. Uh, if you don't have an email file, uh, you can uh, you call us at 303-770-0400, and you can speak to somebody in our church office, and we'll be able to connect with you as well. God bless you. We love you. We will look forward to seeing you next time right here at Encounter Church.